What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. There has been an update for the Axe speed control, the Axe R2 and the motor. This doesn't apply to the older generation Axe. This is only for the new one that is currently produced. Uh, but that firmware changes a couple things. Um, the biggest deal, I think, is, well, all of the features. The minimum RPM got reduced. The motor can go slower now, which is great for rock crawling. The uh, startup power has been incre increased so you can kind of pull from the hole a little bit harder that instantaneous punch or uh, rocket starts if you will and then also the foc can be turned off completely one of the th <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm laughing now because one of the comments that i've seen on various internet postings forums whatever you want to call it is folks say that foc is bad because as your truck gets bound up you can't tell and it just explodes your drivetrain I don't know. I, I, I feel like that that's silly, to say the least, and it's something that I've certainly never encountered, and I don't know that I've ever talked to anybody that's had that happen either, and I've talked to a lot of people. Um, but now, if you like the sag and the stall of a brushed motor setup, you can get more of that out of these FOC systems now. It allows you to turn that off completely. Instead of just turn, tuning it a little bit, you can actually get maximum FOC removal, so to speak, and it makes it more normal. You lose all of the throttle matching and all that fun stuff that I really love about that there have so, also been some updates to the drag brake there's a smart drag brake feature now that is kind of speed sensing and it lets the speed control do some work for you while you're on trail and the most i guess the coolest update now is if you are a fly sky user those noble radios have tons of cool features hobby wing and fly sky have been working together quite closely and now the speed controls can do the live data from the speed control out to the radio so that's pretty cool for the fly sky folks and i think that uh, that'll come to a lot more platforms coming up pretty quick here we're going to take a look at all that uh the updates the setup the install automatic motor pairing because uh, like any foc system if you do do any of these updates you're gonna have to do the automatic motor pairing so we're going to prep you for all of that so you can get this installed and working correctly do not have an axe installed in a truck unfortunately this is the one that i pulled out of my classic X scx 10 and you can see it's had a very hard life the thing is packed with mud People often ask me, do we have to run the fans on axes? I've never run a fan on any of my axes because the we drive in some crap and the fans just get full of mud and grossness, so I don't even bother. All right, so I, uh, I had been doing a little bit of checking before that was connect. So to start fresh, we'll disconnect. Um, you open your app, the speed controls turn on, open the app, you tap the link in the upper right-hand corner there. It'll look for your speed control. Mine has still got the default name and your default password is always the same. I already, already entered that. It's all eights in case you didn't know. And then to do firmware update, you go right here to firmware update and you can update the speed control there and you can see the new number. If you don't show the new number, the one or the 01-01.0.01 and you still have this old one, to get the new firmware, you're gonna back out to settings and and then you can go over here to, uh, 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 yeah, it's about, and then you can get, do your database update right here. You'll tap this and there'll be, it'll check for the database version for you and it does the update. If for whatever reason that doesn't work, just uninstall the app and reinstall it. That's the super easy fix. Like it takes all of 10 seconds to do. Um, so we're going to go back in, do the firmware update, tap on firmware. You can see here, this is the old version. This is going to be my new version. I'm going to hit that. And it wants to know, do I, you can go backwards if you wanted to roll one back. I, I definitely don't want to roll. What did I, oh, yeah, I definitely don't want to roll one back. So you tap firmware update and oh, away you go. And this takes a little bit of time. So I'll leave you with it. Okay, that wasn't that bad. Uh, so it says it's completed and you hit confirm and then it backs you out and disconnects. Now, anytime you do a firmware update to an X combo or any FOC in our lineup for that matter, you have to redo the automatic motor pairing. If you just fire this up and run it right away, it's not gonna work. So you gotta redo the automatic motor pairing. We're gonna do that right now. Automatic motor pairing process is the speed control doing calibration of the sensors. And you have to do this with it unplugged from the receiver. So if you have to open up your receiver box, I'm very sorry, sad panda. So I got the speed control turned off and I have it hooked up to a battery pack here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm operating one-handed. If you guys didn't know, I broke my collarbone. So this is a little bit tricky. Um, you turn the speed control on and then you just hold down the set button until the light goes off and changes colors and then you let go. And the motor starts to do stuff. 
this motor is filthy and I didn't even clean the bearing or anything. So it's, you can hear that. It sounds bad. But what it's doing, it's running the motor at different speeds so that it can get its uh, sensors all calibrated because FOC is awesome. And then once it gets done, it'll just blink at you and then you turn it off and you're good to go. All right, so we're going to redo the calibration just to make sure that the speed control learns the outputs of the radio. I had to undo my sling a little bit here, but you hold down the set button, keep holding it, turn the speed control on, keep holding it. It's going to start to beep. There it is. Then we tap the button once to set neutral. Hold our throttle at full throttle. Tap it again to set full throttle. Hold it reverse. Tap it again. And that's calibration process. It beeps once for neutral, twice for full throttle. Three times you tap in between each. And then after that, you're good to go. Turn the speed control on. Tap the link button. There's the name of the speed control. Password is by default is 888 and I hit it to save so it's already in there. So we'll jump into the parameters so we can see what has changed. Now we have uh, forward and reverse as we've always had and then we also have the bashing mode which is great that was there before. Throttle matching you can go high low like we had before or you can disable it if you like that brush motor style feel. Voltage cutoff remains the same. There's uh, three voltage cutoffs here. We'll go over all of them. Oh, there's four because you can turn it off. If you use nickel metal hydride, you have to turn off your LiPo cutoff. And there's low, intermediate, and high. That's for lower voltage, medium voltage, and then safest voltage or highest voltage. Low is going to be probably around 3.3. Intermediate is probably closer to 3.5. High is probably closer to 3.7. It depends on the batteries, the load, temperatures, all that fun stuff. So that's why there's no numbers there because the numbers don't match and it makes people concerned. Uh, motor rotation, if you have a vehicle that runs the motor clockwise or counterclockwise, this is where you'll fix it. You don't use the radio's reverse and the throttle channel to fix that. You want to use the actual motor rotation setting in your speed control. Oh, and we skip BC. See the BC, it can be set to high or low voltage. Very cool. Uh, in the uh, advanced setup, we have max forward force. You can turn down the throttle. If it's too fast, you can reduce your overall throttle, uh, your punch levels here. Uh, now, go all the way up to 15. So that's why we said the harder starts are even harder than they were before. I want a, I want 15. Give me that. So I'm going to try that out. We and skipped neutral range. I fired the camera back up, came back to talk about neutral range. In case you didn't know what it was, it's the dead zone between the first pulse of throttle and your first pulse of reverser brakes. And so if you have like a real twitchy throttle or maybe your drag brake is a little inconsistent, you can increase the neutral range to help with that. Over time, a trigger on a radio can wear out and your neutral will start to bounce around or shift a little bit, even though you're not touching the trigger. Neutral range allows you to adjust that dead zone. And then your RPM decrease rate, this has to do with the FOC tuning on how it decelerates. Um, lower is slower, higher is faster. And you can use that to change how it feels off throttle, basically. As you let off of the throttle, it tunes in how the motor responds to that. Max reverse force, much like the forward force, is the full speed of reverse. Sometimes we're very bad at using reverse on the opposite end of our trigger or our throttle push, if you will. And so this allows you to adjust that. I'm not terrible with it, and I like to have decent reverse, so I, I like to turn that up a little bit. Um, max brakes force, obviously... It's only going to apply when you're in the basher mode. We have the push brake available. That's what, that's what that does. And then your drag brake force, this is your, not for drag racing, but your hill hold brake, if you will. I don't run that all the way up. This thing has plenty of brakes. I usually turn it down a little bit just for the sake of uh, keeping things a little bit cooler. The lower the drag brake is, the, the cooler the temps are. We don't do a lot of like park on a hill type stuff either. Smart drag brake has to do with the speed of how it uh, knows when you want drag brake and don't want drag brake, another new feature. Uh, the drag brake rate is how quickly it applies the, the drag brakes. So if you like it to slap on the brakes very hard or uh, apply the brakes very slowly, you can do that here. I generally like to leave this down at one, but now that we have the smart drag brake, that may be less important. We'll find out. Uh, turbo timing and turbo delay. You can make the motor faster. Uh, turbo is electronic timing advance where the speed control actually overdrives the firing of the coils compared to where the rotor is, and that allows for some faster RPM speed at the cost of temperature and amp draw. So you can, let's, let's see, what do we have now? It goes up to 10 degrees like it did before, which I'm a fan of. I don't think rock crawlers need a lot of timing. I don't run that all the time, but if I do, uh, you can use the turbo delay to control how it kicks in. Um, 
I tend to run this all the way up so that the motor revs up kind of like a two speed. So as you're at full throttle, it takes a moment before it kicks into that higher RPM just for funsies. I, I, I know it sounds silly, but here we'll, we'll crank that all up. So you can change the name of your profile if you wanted to. Um, some people like to put their names in there so people get to tune in and stuff like that. They can. All right, so we got this guy all calibrated. We did the automatic motor pairing and we recalibrated it. But I wanted to, do, to look at the minimum RPM changes. Um, I had checked this before the update and the slowest I could get the motor to go was about 200 RPM, which is pretty slow. You could see the motor turning and it was pretty obvious that it was very slow, but we're going to get in here to show some real time data. Uh, so you tap on, you're already connected. You tap into data, you go to real time and then it'll take a moment and everything lights up that you got response. My radio is right here and, uh, you can see I can give it gas and the motor responds. All the things happen. So... I'm going to just barely creep into the throttle and you can see here we're down at like hardly any RPM. You can see the motor spinning there. That's a lot. I can get down to like 10 RPM almost. That's just the movement of my finger as I'm trying to hold the trigger. So I'm going to use the throttle trim and we'll see how consistent we can get this guy. But you see there that's it's just barely it wants to move. Like if I give it a tap, it wants to go. So a couple more clicks. The motor is turning ever so slowly. You see that? It's like, it says 10 RPM. Let me see if I can bump that down a little bit more. A little bit lower than that. It went down one click. So it's barely able to register. I think we see the resolution is about 10 RPM when we get down there. 1% throttle. That's very, very slow. This is a 2800 kV motor that's able to go that slow. And I can't stop that if I were to try. Like, that's the beauty of the FOC is that whatever your RPM is, it's going to have torque down there, too. With a brush motor, if you can get it to go that slow, it'll stall. You won't be able to use that actual RPM. So, But I just want to take a second to, to show the difference in the RPM. But let's get up to 200 RPM so you can see kind of what we were at before. So that's right about 200 RPM. And while you can still, you can see that, right? Like that's still moving. It's very slow still, but quite a big improvement from where we were at to where we're at now. So um, I like to see that 10 RPM. Pretty cool. So that's just a quick update for the new Axe firmware. Covered some of the basics, the new features, how to do the update, automatic motor pairing, calibration, everything that you're going to need to cover once you get this update done and installed into your rig. If you do have any questions, comments or concerns, please do shoot us an email. North America at hobbywing.com. Don't forget, we also have a podcast. We do it the first and third Friday each and every month. You can find us on your favorite podcast service. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. We give away a free combo each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. So I am going to get this system installed into a truck and go show some of these new settings off. It's going to be a little bit of time. Like I said, I'm down to, to kind of one wing here. I, I had a, a small motorcycle accident and I broke my collarbone and fractured some vertebrae. So it's a, going to be a, a bit of a recovery time before I can get out there and kind of wrench hard. Plugging batteries in hurts sometimes. So I'm trying to take it a little bit easy. But until then, if you do have questions, please feel free, like I said, shoot us an email north america at hobbywing.com we can address some of that stuff uh, about the new features and what all that does but hopefully i covered most of that for you here and if not let us know and as always folks thanks for tuning in another episode of the charlie show here at the nerd bench we will see you all next time <laughs>